hold on to your butts. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's not that serious just yet. Welcome back to the Weather Center. Today is now June 2nd, 2025, and we're here with your latest tropical update. And as usual, we have some new up-and-comings to talk about a lot closer to home than where we were previously concentrating. We've been talking the West Southern Caribbean, possibly near the Yucatan, the Bay of Campeche. Well, now we're looking at something right off the Florida East Coast. We'll talk all about that in this latest update. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your Monday afternoon to join me here in the Weather Center. If you could be so kind, it would be genuinely appreciated if you smash that subscribe button. If you're brand new to the channel and want reliable, accurate, and timely tropical weather updates as we rock through the 2025 hurricane season, you can definitely count on me, New 6 meteorologist David Nazario, to deliver that information for you. So please consider hitting that subscribe button, giving that like button a little nudge, dropping a comment down below upon the conclusion of this discussion. And as a matter of fact, note the new setup here. I went ahead and invested in a new sure microphone to outfit this setup even better than where we already have so drop a comment below immediately if you could be so kind let me know what you think of the new audio quality if there is even a noticeable difference i personally like this sure has great reviews and it's all thanks to your awesome contributions to the channel like i've always said during our live streams they go right back into this channel to improve our community and the content that i can deliver to all of you on a day-to-day week-to-week basis so with all that being said let's go ahead and get started. This is National Hurricane Center's homepage. As of this afternoon, they have designated an area of non-tropical, I emphasize that, non-tropical low pressure could start to develop right off the shore of Central Florida, kind of up towards Volusia County, Daytona Beach, getting up closer to Flagler County, the St. Augustine, Jacksonville area. Our models have been hinting at something trying to consolidate over leftover remnants of a decaying front that came through last weekend. And if you notice here, they make sure to emphasize that in their narrative as well, National Hurricane Center. A non-tropical area of low pressure is forecast to form near or offshore the southeast. United States with only a 10% chance it does anything over the next seven days. And that is the key that they have written there. Near or off the coast, if it does start to develop over land, we're done. It's not really going to do too much except provide us with lots of rainfall and possible severe weather over the next three, five, seven days. And that's likely why National Hurricane Center is only given it a 10% shot at developing. A lot hinges on if it can stay off the coast over those Gulf Stream waters as well as those continental shelf waters that are absolutely cooking right now. Anywhere between 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, all thanks to the dominant subtropical ridging we've had down off the west coast, or I should say the western half of the of the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf itself, and over us in the south and southeast. So we'll have to wait and see. Models have been very interesting. And then naturally, closer to Friday the 13th, middle June, I'm still watching down here, even though things have been very wishy-washy, not paying attention to the GFS anymore maybe taking quick glances, but that model has started to move our stuff out in time. So if you've seen anyone mentioning a hurricane or major hurricane, doesn't quite look like it's going to happen. And in fact, all of our other global models do suggest our Atlantic high pressure is going to stay so strong, as well as our easterly trade winds out of there, that anything moving through the MDR, the Caribbean, is going to be knocked right on through Central America. And then the Eastern Pacific will have some fun trying to churn something out of it, which is a matter of fact... Here is the Eastern Pacific right now. Notice that they've expanded the AOI, too. This is kind of neat. They've got the Central and East Pack here on National Hurricane Center's homepage. We do have that one disturbance there in the orange zone, code orange, 40% shot of developing over the next seven days. This is also likely to go up as we go through time. Now... Here's a broad look at the grand scheme of things across the basin. The Atlantic, still quiet. We've got a lot of that Saharan air layer, the dust rocking through the MDR, moving through the Caribbean as we speak. A lot of it is going to make its presence known here in the southeast, especially the Sunshine State, as we get towards the middle portions and latter half of this week into the first weekend of June. And now there is that one area of disturbed weather, quite an expansive swath of showers, thunderstorms, not only a Affecting us here in Florida, producing gusty winds and hail, but also beginning to influence the weather for our Bahamas, 
off the East Coast for Cuba. Cayman Islands trying to get in on a little of the action as well, and that's all thanks to a trough extending down the eastern seaboard and a surface boundary that tried to make its way all the way through, but because of how late in the season it is, it lost the little nudge to make it all the way through our neck of the woods, and as a result, it's hung up over the Florida Peninsula. It is continuing to decay. We have another feature that's going to be coming through the pattern here within the next day or two that's going to help to stir the pot a little bit more, and I think that's why models are latching on to an area of disorganized showers and storms trying to cluster together and become something a little bit more. Pacific monsoonal trough still active. You got some areas of showers and storms moving off towards the west in that monsoonal trough configuration. It is likely that first X, give or take that general area, that's going to try to manifest itself into our next name feature. One other piece I want to make mention of, and I'm going to leave it very short and sweet. We have a number of tropical waves moving through the intertropical convergence zone in the lower latitudes of the main development region in the Atlantic. I'm just putting that out there because I'm watching them. Models are trying to do some interesting things as you get beyond the 10, 14 day mark, but that's why I'm going to leave it at that. It's way out there, but just know that I'm keeping a close eye on it. Here's a closer look using our True Color Visible Satellite. And I want to just say right out of the gate, I love this satellite shot. You can see everything. That's why it's True Color. It's what the naked eye can see via a satellite and lots of showers, moisture down there. I'm very interested to see what this does as that dense plume of Saharan dust comes through. This is going to be a great little science experiment over almost to see exactly whether or not the Saharan air layer washes this out altogether, or if there is still some moisture that hangs on for dear life or enough to just kind of wash it down quite a bit. So I'll have to wait and see. I know it's going to be coming in here very soon. And in fact, it almost looks like on the true color, you can kind of see evidence of it behind my head here. Let me go ahead and take myself off. But right there in the lower right-hand portion of your screen, I can kind of see some shades of brown moving near to Jamaica, the Western Caribbean, up towards the Cayman Islands. And we're going to have to see. We're going to see if it actually does a whole lot to our setup across the area. I wanted to bring up WPC very quickly to show you that this would be a homegrown type of solution. We've got a leftover front, upper level influence. It looks like there's going to be a bit of a cold pocket in five to 300 millibars of the atmosphere that's going to help to create a little more lift along the leading edge of it. So if there were to be something to try to manifest itself, it is actually in the favorable quadrants of each of these outer lying pieces to do so right over the southeast and off our east coast. Here's a look at the latest European model, and you can see right about as we go through kind of Wednesday-ish, Wednesday you get a little bit of energy to start really flaring up. It gets a little aggravated right there off the Volusia Flagler coastlines. It's where it seems to be most concentrated, and this here... This conglomerate of vorticity is more than likely a reflection of our upper level low. I don't want to go all over the place for the sake of saving time, but if I come over to your 500 millibar vorticity, there it is. You can see that upper level low right off our west coast. And at ahead of these features, since you have jet stream winds rotating around the southern flank of it, you get your difluent and your rising motions just on the eastern extent of where these features tend to plop themselves. And as a result, you go back down to your 850 or 5,000 foot vorticity. Watch what happens as it stays right along the shoreline. You get a little bit of that further organizing. Now, what's interesting, though, I want to add... And this is that potential fail mode for this little thing is what I'm going to call it. Notice a bulk of it stays up over the Carolinas. It's not actually over open water. Our models are very back and forth. Eventually, it goes back out over the Gulf Stream just to the immediate southern coast of the Cape Hatteras area of North Carolina. And then that's that. As we go through the weekend, it gets picked up by the pattern and whisked away, never to be seen again, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. Whether or not it develops, I emphasize this over on my other social media platforms, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. It is going to be a hefty rainmaker for us in Florida and then up the eastern seaboard. You can see as we go through time and we get into Thursday and Friday, we start to see rainfall accumulations anywhere between two, maybe three inches. Some spots could see four to five inches. If you look down closer to the Miami, southern Florida area, there is an indicator of six and a half inches. 
thanks to what we have going on down there now. And as this feature tries to pull in more energy and moisture to produce even more showers and rainfall, same can be said as it moves up the east coast. Now, we're not going to see a lot of inland impacts because this is going to be fairly sloppy, slop city as we like to call it here on the Weather Center. But right along the coast of Georgia and the Carolinas, we're going to see rainfall totals anywhere between one to three inches piling up and in a short period of time. I also want to show you the wind gusts, because even though this is going to be an attempt at developing something, I'm not going to say a tropical cyclone, we're not going to be seeing anything extremely menacing from it. If you notice, this is in knots. Those are your units of measure. And as it begins to organize right there, you get a little center of circulation scraping the coastline. Max expected wind gusts could be anywhere between 20 to 30 miles an hour, at least based on what the euro is calling for. GFS doesn't have much of it at all. The Canadian model and the German model. Do keep it a little further offshore, which could bump up those expected wind gusts and wind conditions right along the coastline. And with wind being the topic of discussion, I do want to point out these sloppy homegrown systems, regardless of further organization, can still be hefty water producers, not only when the rain, but with rip currents and erosion along the beach line. And you can see here... As we go through Thursday, I'm going to leave the clock stopped right here because it doesn't really change too much as we go towards Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the weekend before it finally moves away. Wave heights right off the coast could be anywhere between 12 to 16, maybe even 18 feet which will definitely produce a little bit of localized beach erosion up the southeast coastline as it moves northeast. And the rip current risk is going to go through the roof without a doubt. So be very careful if you're taking advantage of these warmer conditions, especially here in Florida. But regardless of where you are, remember, we're now officially in summer vacation mode. So a lot of folks are going to be coming out. You got to be careful of that. So now, where do we go from here? Lots and lots going on with our MJO. The models are just being all over the place, and I am personally losing confidence that we even attempt to get a named storm somewhere down there over Central America for the Atlantic side of things. It almost looks like our North Atlantic Oscillation, the North Pacific Oscillation, the North Pacific America, or the North, the Pacific North American almost had an aneurysm right there. You guys know what I'm talking about. The PNA, it looks like we're going to be in such aggressive phases of both. Both of those teleconnections, everything that tries to come out of the Atlantic in the Caribbean and take advantage of those rising motions, as well as the leftover moisture and stimulation our MJO will provide, where we stand currently, everything looks to move into the eastern Pacific. We could kind of go through two, if not three more named storms in the East Pack, kind of hogging up all the activity from the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, or the Gulf of America. I'm going to get blown up in the comments for that. Y'all know what I mean. It just slipped. You can't unwire that many years of saying that. So the Gulf, y'all know what I mean. So politely. As you can see, you go through the European Ensemble, and it seems like we're slowing down even more. By about the 10th of June, we still have all these anomalously strong rising motions occurring right over the eastern Pacific, attempting to bleed into the Caribbean, but a lot of it is focused in the East Pack regardless. I know we have the shades of green here, but if you look at the arrows, you have your difluence occurring there, but the actual lift is being focused just to the south of Central America in the tropical Pacific. Now, a reason I brought up the MDR and the waves out there is because if you look, as we get closer to Friday the 13th, we do get a little bit of the focusing action to build some momentum over the central and western main development region. So that's just something I'm going to keep my eye on. And then as we rock through Friday the 13th, still kind of hugging the equatorial areas of the East Pack South America. And it isn't until beyond that where we finally get some leftovers of the MJO to try to push through. But then by then... 16th, 17th of June, we're pretty much done. You can kind of see that here in our velocity anomalies, courtesy of the European model over on weathermodels.com. It looks like we are just naturally biasing the Eastern Pacific. Not too much is expected to spill over into the Caribbean, so we are truly at a holding pattern. Truly in a holding pattern, we really just don't know right now, and the models are also heavily struggling to figure this stuff out. We will be within, or I should say, in between dust plumes, so that'll be okay. We'll have plenty of moisture out there. We will have energy and vorticity, tropical waves, and little phenomena, localized phenomena, thanks to the Central American gyre. But because of where we are biasing the lift, I do have a theory 
And you all who have stuck with me for a long time now, remember through homework I've done in the background, it's sometime shortly after we are right underneath the favorable MJO phase where things will try to get going. I believe we had an example or two of that in 2024 where we had such aggressive vertical velocities parked overhead, nothing could do anything, nothing could get going. Because believe it or not, fast motions in the vertical, whether it be downward or upward, too fast, and that increases your shear. Nothing's going to want to behave itself. So I'm wondering if maybe we've been bullseyeing the darker shades incorrectly. It could possibly be between the 16th and the 21st, we try to get a little bit of an attempt, or at the very least, we start to see a more representative signal, maybe, by about Friday the 13th. We'll see. If I'm confident at least if we do not get anything to exploit these conditions by then we're cooked it could be a very very anomalously quiet start to the 2025 hurricane season but that'll do it for your latest tropical update folks thank you once again so much for taking some time out of your monday afternoon to join me here on the weather center please consider sharing this information if you think there's anyone out there who could benefit from it looks like we're gonna be in for some heavier rainfalls in for some chop here in the southeast united states and we are regardless of what the models are showing right now we're going to continue to watch in real time what happens with not only our atlantic high pressure the pna over north america the mjo and the way models progress it models are all over the place euro biases the east pack gfs is too fast canadian model doesn't show anything so we're kind of at a toss-up we're just standing by climatologically speaking it does seem like we could favor the middle portions of june i'm really still thinking by friday the 13th we may have something to watch so we'll wait and see thank you all once again for watching i hope you've had a spectacular start to your week enjoy the good weather if you have it in your neck of the woods we're gonna be dodging all this heavy rainfall and possible severe weather action here in central florida and we will see you again soon here in the weather center but until then this is weather center nazario signing out